Hi everyone, it's Steph. If this is your first time here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. And if this isn't your first time, then welcome back. Before we get into the video, I just want to make sure that you guys are subscribed to my channel. We actually have a lot of people who watch my videos who aren't subscribed, so I would really appreciate it if you did, if you like the content, if you like the gameplay videos, if you like some of the unboxings that I do, I would really, really appreciate it. Today's video is all about comparison. So there's actually a lot of cameras out there on the market that you can use for streaming, whether you're on Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, whatever it is, and we're going to be breaking them down today. The first contender will be the Logitech C922 camera, which everyone has been using for quite some time. It was like the original stream cam. The second contender is the Logitech stream cam, which came out, I think, in the last few years or so. It hasn't been out for very long, but for full visibility, I don't actually have the camera with me, so I won't be able to compare the quality but I will be able to make comparisons between the specifications on the website. The third contender is the Razer Keo Pro. Again, I don't have this camera with me, so I won't be able to show you the image quality, but again, we'll be comparing the specifications. The fourth contender I have is the Elgato face cam, which I recently did an unboxing for, which you can find on my channel. The last option or contender I have is your digital camera, which I'm currently filming this video on right now. It's my Sony a7C with a Tamron lens. This camera was like the go-to camera, for when you first started streaming or not even streaming, just webcam calls, whatever it is that you needed for that little extra quality. The price for this webcam comes in at $199.95 Australian dollars. Obviously you can get it for cheaper when there are sales, but that's around the cost that it will take. For the resolution, it's 720p at 60 FPS or 1080 at 30 FPS. So it's pretty standard. The field of view is 78 degrees. The material is a glass lens. You get about 162 grams of weight in the webcam. It works for both Windows and Mac with a USB-A connection. The only color that it comes in is black, which is, again, pretty standard. And some of the features include coming with a tripod, there's a built-in stereo mic in the webcam itself, and there is no privacy cap. And this is what it looks like. You can also adjust some of the things in your streaming program. So like if I use OBS for a stream, you can actually adjust some of the camera features. So this camera is literally a plug and play as you probably had noticed when I first started this segment, it was a little bit blue, but now it's balanced itself out with some warmer tones. So you really don't need to know what you're doing. You can literally plug it into your computer and just set it up. So for the second contender, we have the Logitech Stream Cam. I don't actually have the camera with me, so I can't compare and show you the image quality. However, I will be able to just let you know some of the comparisons. The price comes in at $279.95. It is definitely more expensive than the Logitech C922. However, your resolution comes in at 1080p at 60 FPS, which is definitely an improvement on the C922. It also has the same field of view at 78 degrees. There is a premium glass lens in the stream cam with a focal length of 3.7 millimeters. And it actually weighs less than the C922 at 150 grams. The stream cam also works on both Windows and Mac. However, it is a USB-C connection. So you'll have to make sure that you have a USB-C port in your computer or your laptop before you use this camera. It also comes in a white model and a graphite model. Some things to note is that there is no tripod with the stream cam, there's no privacy cap. However, there is a built-in dual omnidirectional mic with a noise reduction filter. So basically, again, it's your plug and play. You should be able to just plug it into your computer, granted that you have a USB-C port. You should also be able to adjust some of the settings in the Logitech G Hub software that you can download off the Logitech website. For our third contender is the Razer Keo Pro. Again, I don't have the Razer with me, but I have heard a lot of things about it. It comes in at $329.95. So again, quite a significant jump for resolution is 1080 at 60 fps so the same as the logitech stream cam however if you want to enable hdr for more vibrant colors it will lower the fps to 30. there are actually three options for the field of view for the razer keo pro 103 90 and 80. it really gives you that wide angle look so if you want to display anything behind you like some props and some memorabilia you are able to do so and keep it in frame the lens is also made of glass. It is the Gorilla Glass 3. It actually is quite a lot heavier than the other two cameras at 195 grams. The Razer also works on both Windows and Mac, and it actually has a USB-C from the camera to a USB-A port for your computer. The only color it comes in is black, and some things to note about the Razer Keo is that it doesn't have a tripod, but it does come with a privacy cap, and it also has a built-in stereo omnidirectional mic. So the Elgato face cam, our fourth contender. For full visibility, Elgato did send me this face cam, not to review, but 
just to unbox and to use. Um, I currently use it as my cat cam because I use my DSLR as my mainstream cam and it is really, really good. So the price, it comes in under 350 Australian dollars, which is similar to the Razer Kiro Pro. The Elgato face cam has an 82 degrees field of view. So compared to both Logitech webcams, it is far superior and much wider looking. It also has a focal length of 24 millimeters. So that's equivalent to a full frame camera. So you're kind of getting like a hybrid of a DSLR in a sense. It also comes in at 130 grams, which is compared to the Logitech C922, it's 162. Compared to the Logitech Streamcam at 150 and the Razer Kiro Pro at 195. So even with a glass prime lens in the face cam, it is much lighter than the others. It works both on Windows and Mac. And like the Razer Kia Pro, is a USB-C from the camera to a USB-A for the computer. It only comes in the color black. And some really interesting features to note is that it comes with a camera hub software. So you can adjust the settings like you would with a DSLR. It also has a Sony sensor to enable the detailed capturing and minimal noise of the image. It also has noise reduction as well. So once you adjust some of the things in the camera hub, sometimes it creates greens and noise and it, with one click, it just removes the noise reduction for you. There is also a flash memory in the camera to save the settings when you're swapping between, you know, your main computer at home or your laptop. It comes with a privacy cap. There is no tripod and there is no built-in microphone. So I'm pretty sure that this is like the first, you know, mainstream webcam that doesn't have a built-in microphone because I've got to believe that for your stream, audio quality has to be done externally through another microphone and again they do sell the Elgato Wave 3 and the Elgato Wave 1 so that's kind of I guess helping themselves but I think that's a pretty standard opinion to have is that you need external audio to really make sure it's superior and you can't get that from a webcam. The final contender for this video and one of your other options for a webcam is a DSLR. So this is what I stream off, this is what I make my videos on and the image quality is insane. And this obviously bumps us into a quite a higher price range. My camera in total, I think cost me oh, minimum 1500 Australian dollars. And that is with the body of a Sony a7C and with a Tamron seven to 28 millimeter lens. So with this Tamron and the Sony, it gives me a really beautiful image quality. And I only swapped over to this kind of setup maybe in the last six months. So it's definitely not something that you would jump straight into as your first streaming camera. Unless you already have the camera and the lens lying around, I would not suggest you go straight for this option. Even though the image quality looks great, it's definitely something that you have to work towards and invest for your setup. The field of view, again, it depends on your lens because a different lens changes your field of view. I can have super zoomed in and cups on my face so you can see all the like makeup lines, my pimples like this little section of my of my brow like gel that didn't like blend in properly. You can see everything. This is the widest angle that my camera goes. And for me, it's enough, especially when I'm streaming, you get to see, you know, the background of my setup and regardless of your body and lens, it is going to be heavy because of all the things that are in the camera that make it really good and make it work. It's just going to be heavy. Having a DSLR for your stream cam can work for both Windows and Mac. However, you do have to think about the additional accessories that you need to make it work with you. So for example, you need a camera link or a capture card to make sure that your camera is captured by a computer. You also need a dummy battery or a constant source of power for your camera. So whether or not it is an external dummy battery that you can buy, or if your camera has a functionality that you can literally plug it into a power source and it continues to you know, stay on without turning off halfway through your stream, then you also need that. You'll also need an additional cable to connect your camera to the cam link. So all these accessories that you need to make your, you know, DSLR work for your stream will add up to the cost again. So you have to think about that as well. There aren't any like notable features when using a stream cam besides the fact that it is a really great quality, but you can use the onboard camera or you can use an external microphone or you can use, you know, a camera that's plugged into your computer. So Either way, it's up to you, but that is the DSLR. This is kind of insane, but I wanted to just show you guys the difference between the three cameras that I do have and the image quality. So in the top left, we have the Logitech C922. And in the top right, we have the Elgato face cam. And in the bottom right, we also have the DSLR that I use for streaming. As you mentioned before, the Logitech C922 is kind of like, it was the go-to plug and play. And 
honestly at the price point it kind of still is compared to the other cameras you can see that it kind of washes me out a little bit like it gives me a really nice blurred skin look um i do not look as tanned as i normally am on like for this camera which is kind of eh, like it depends on what you are going for the field of view is not as wide as i would prefer like you can't see some of the stuff on the top shelf here but all in all again super easy to use however i would say that as you you know, invest more into your stream, you might consider picking up an external microphone. Even if your headset has a microphone, that's probably more preferable to use as an audio source as opposed to the one that's, you know, 30 centimeters away from you trying to capture your audio. The most notable difference for the Elgato face cam is the field of view. So there's so much to see in my room and you can tell, like you can literally tell how, like, how much you can see. If you compare the Logitech C922 and the Elgato face cam, it looks a little unnatural if you think about it. But this is my skin tone. <laughs> like I'm not as pale as it looks on the Logitech. This is more of my skin tone. I would say that there are definitely options to adjust in the camera hub. I really do love the field of view on the Elgato face cam. It gives you just so much options to decorate the back of your stream. However, I will note the price difference. Logitech C922 is about $200. The Elgato face cam is under $350. So. If you're on a budget, again, the C922 is probably your best bet. And of course, down below we have the DSLR. I use it for so many things in my day-to-day -day life as a content creator. So, you know, I use it for vlogs. I use it and take it to Lyra to record my performances and my classes. I film unboxings. I take photos for Instagram on it. It's really just, I use it so often and every day that it makes sense. It made sense for me to invest that money into a camera like that and a lens like that. However, it is a slippery slope. If anyone is even a hobbyist in photography or cameras, they will tell you it's a slippery slope. We had five contenders for you to look at for which stream cam works best for you. The Logitech C922, the Logitech Stream Cam, the Razer Keo Pro, the Elgato Face Cam, and your DSLR. We spoke about price, we spoke about resolution, the material, the weight, the system requirements, and any notable features across all of these webcams. And let me just tell you what I think will work best for you. If you're really just looking for your first stream cam that's plug and play and you're on a budget, C922 is the one for you. If you have a little bit more budget to spend and you wanna elevate your stream, I think the Logitech Stream Cam will work really well. It has a built-in omnidirectional microphone with noise reduction filter, so it means that you don't have to spend money on an external microphone just yet, and you can rely on your webcam or even the microphone on your headset. With the Razer Kia Pro, I personally, again, haven't used it. However, I think for the price jump between the Stream Cam and the C922, it's really not worth it, in my opinion. For me, right now, in October 2021, I think the Elgato face cam is really the top tier face cam on the market because they've spent their time making a webcam and not a webcam plus microphone. And it wouldn't be right for me to not give you my final thoughts about having a DSLR as your webcam. Again, I've mentioned it quite a few times. I do not recommend this is your first stream cam. If this video helped you out today, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm really close to 1,000 subscribers. I also stream four nights a week on Twitch. We play cozy games. Currently, we're playing through Tales of Arise, but I'm really looking forward to getting back into Animal Crossing once the new update drops. And that's it for today. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!